meeting to order. Seven o'clock. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. While you're standing, I'd like a moment of silence uh, for the people of Ukraine and three people that have passed away that have been connected to the school, Ed Schneider, Ed McVinney, who was a representative to the school committee for Hanover, and Phil Jubert, who was a bus driver and drove bus number nine for many years. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight there will be a vote to enter executive session to consider the purchase exchange, lease, or value of real estate at 436 Webster Street, Hanover, as an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the school committee's bargaining position. As an agenda adjustment, after executive session we may not take up uh, number 11 on our agenda. Um, it all depends what happens at executive sessions. Public comment. Any comments from the public tonight? Seeing none? Oh, and excuse me. Of course, the meeting is being videotaped. Well, we're here. Um, uh, approve the minutes. Motion made by Situate, second by Cohasset. Any discussion on the minutes? All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? It is unanimous for those in attendance. Student advisory, uh, she's unable to make it tonight. Reports. Jim. Jim? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in your package is the treasurer's report, which um, highlights culinary on the cover this this, this um, month and also has a blurb um, representative the cost from I think it's Hanover, Norwell and Rockland who is mm -hmm. quite quite active on Facebook and, um, talking about all the successes of the surgery he, he made a nice post about the culinary grant that came through for hundred thousand dollars nice um, and he's constantly posting good things about the school so um, that's just a little blurb that he posted for us. Um, page two is our cash balances as of February 28th. Um, overall, $5.664 million, uh, $845,000 per head. A little dip this time of year only because we, on March 1st is when we do the assessment billing for our member town. So um, we pretty much will send out, uh, we sent out about $2 million of the bills uh, on March 1st. So we'll get that, that money aside and trickle it now. So. It would be in good shape um, to replenish the, the bank accounts. Page two is our revenues. Again, no revenue from our towns this month. We have, um, we did get, um, we have applied for the Commonwealth of Mass has a COVID relief fund for wages that are paid to employees for COVID relief situations and so forth. Um, so Pam Curtis and, and Holly have been working together to identify the COVID hours that were paid throughout the district in the last few months and we did get a reimbursement of $15,000, $15,894 uh, this past month for the, again, the reimbursement from the Commonwealth. So, um, in page three uh, is our expenses. Again, 1.1 million of expenses for the month. Um, again, payroll is the biggest number as always and health insurance is the second biggest number. Everything else is going smoothly. Um, we're getting a little bit more of a bump in some of the supply requests from some of the teachers as they've run through a lot of their opening uh, school year supplies and they're replenishing the, the shelves. Um, but overall things are going well. Janine's doing a fabulous job in purchasing. She was in sunny control and, and working on uh, a lot of different projects. And, and again, Pam's been acclimated well to the, to the payroll system. So overall things are going well. Motion to accept the treasurer's report. So moved. Second. Abington. Second. Any discussion on the treasurer's report? All those in favor? Aye. 
Anything for those who are here? Motion carries. You want someone else to read this? Oh, you passed it on already. Mr. Queen, you read that for the warrants. Okay. Uh, warrant 16A, uh, $146,211. Just read the bottom. The, just the bottom? Okay. Yeah. Make sure you don't want to get into the weeds. We don't want to get into the weeds. No. Okay. So total warrants is $1,625,079.60. Seconded. I'll sit you with any discussion on the warrants. All those in favor? Aye. 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 For those that are here, motion carries. Budget transfers. We have uh, one budget transfer um, for the year. Um, one is the um, miscellaneous ex expenses. There's been some planning work being done by um, Mr. Boyle, so there's been some expenses that have uh, become propped up over the last month. Um, so we're looking to add $5,000 to that budget line item. And software licenses, again, as, as we go uh, more technical, uh, a lot of the software programs that we're dealing with, are, are, you know, they all have licensing fees. Um, so that, that number is 17000 um, The savings is out of county retirement. Um, we, originally, we usually build, we usually set our county retirement budget based upon their actuarial numbers, and their actual area numbers came a little lower. So we budget a little um, high on the county retirement. So we have identified some savings there, so um, so twenty-two thousand dollars would be reduced for the county kind of retirement budget. Okay. Motion. Move. Situate. Hanson. Let's do it again. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No. It's unanimous. Motion carries. Anything else? Here? No, I think I'm good. Okay. Nothing from the chairman tonight. No subcommittee reports. Superintendent Director. Huh? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A few items on my report before I turn it over to our admin team. Uh, first item is MSBA core program invitation. Uh, it's, uh, it's certainly my pleasure to be able to say here at this meeting that on March 2nd, the Mass School Building Authority at its, uh, at its board meeting voted to invite our district mm -hmm. into eligibility uh, we've been applying annually since 2015. We were one of 17 districts accepted. This begins a lengthy, but we're very much looking forward to process, uh, which hopefully will culminate in several years with a modernized school that can take more children and is ready to push deeper into this century, meeting the needs for both faculty and students. So the process, which will come under new business, begins with a baby step tonight uh, and that is to vote to accept essentially the MSBA's terms and conditions, the initial compliance certification. Well, I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, in, uh, when it comes up under new business. Over the next two months, uh, it is my hope to be able to tackle most of what the MSBA would like us to do in the next 270 days. We don't get extra credit for it, but we've been waiting for this, and I think we can do it. Uh, the next steps will involve uh, bringing you language on setting aside funds for the feasibility study. We have been saving money for this. We will not need to borrow. We will not need to go back to our communities and have it be a warrant article. It is a matter for the regional school committee to, uh, to decide. And hopefully I can bring that language to you at our next meeting uh, in April. We'll also bring back in April uh, plans to form a, a building committee, which is another early requirement in the process. And it may take one additional month, but hopefully by May at the latest, we will bring you a document where the MSBA asks us to envision. So if you get a new school or a renovated school, and the school is bigger and you can take more students, focus on your Chapter 74 programs and tell us which programs would you like to make bigger. Which ones would you like to introduce that you don't currently have now? And explain how it connects to the local labor market. And so that is a process that we've been talking about internally for a very long time. Again, not something that would take a lot of work to be able to bring to you. But it's a very important part of the process because what the MSBA will do eventually is they will end up saying to us, 
We will, uh, we're going to look at enrollment data, birth and death rates in your district. We're going, to, we're going to project what sized building would match with what you're saying you need for programming. They want to hear from us about our waiting list data that we have. So I'm looking forward to bringing that report to you. Again, that may not be April, it might be May. But after we complete those components, we can then go back to the MSBA and say, we're ready for you to review what we have. What follows that process would be the beginnings of putting together a project team, which would involve the building committee having a subcommittee that would hire an OPM and a designer. Now I'm getting ahead of myself, this is not months, now I'm getting into year plus. But if we can do the low hanging fruit work quickly, we might be able to get in the queue. The MSBA conducts business on a quarterly basis. So as much as we can do properly, as quickly as possible, we, we will do. And so I look forward to those items on the agenda in upcoming, in upcoming months. Second item for my report, budget meeting update. Uh, we have uh, met with uh, Situate, uh, both advisory and selectmen. Also met with Norwell Advisory on March 15th, yesterday. Whitman Finance Committee on March 22nd. And Rockland's Finance Committee likely to be either the 23rd or the 30th of March. So the process continues uh, the process continues as planned uh, in terms of the budget. Next item, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it over to uh, Mark and Sandy for their reports. Good evening, everyone. We continue to uh, celebrate the district and the groups and the individuals that support us. Uh, tonight, we are bringing you not one, but two different groups to talk about. First up is uh, Ms. Collette. Claire, our school nurse. She deserves a day, but, uh, just to give you some ideas, as of last week, we've had 276 positive cases of COVID in the building for the school year. You can imagine the number of negative cases that she and her team have had to deal with in the last seven months. But that's that's just a small bananas for what she really does. She is the uh, She's the first level of medical attention for pretty much everybody in this building. Um, she triages situations, she deals with burns and cuts and other shock-related accidents. Um, and maybe most important, she is a good ear for our students. It's a place they can go where they feel comfortable and they can talk about what their problems are. And not just medical, but life problems. And really having her as a an ear to bend is very important for our students. So I'm going to invite her up to say a couple of words. Collect. Thanks, Mark. Um, I'm Collette. I'm the nurse coordinator thank you um, the care consideration everything you put into all the COVID policies that you um, had to deal with in the past two years it's appreciated i know everything you put into it um, and you know everybody's thoughts beliefs everybody did different things but you guys put everybody um, the students health and safety first at all times so that was appreciated um, to the parents and there's only a few here but man i feel like we went through war together um, the state guidance is changing all the time, but every parent, um, if I could just hug, because they sent their kids healthy and ready to learn and put up with so much in the past couple of years. So um, it was truly amazing to be part of. Um, and then to administration, Mr. Hickey, the staff, the teachers, um, I'm mind blown at what everything they did to get these kids educated in a school in the past few years. So. Um, it's amazing what they did, and um, if that's what we can do in a pandemic, uh, sky's the limit what we can do. <laughs> yeah, it's just this school is amazing. So, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not the best public speaker, but um, I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Association. This is uh, something we haven't done in quite some time. We have a very active group of 
uh, parents in the building working at different organizations, but I wanted to give them an ear and give them some time to talk about what they're doing, how they're raising money in a pandemic, and what they're looking to do and support the school. So I'm going to introduce uh, Mrs. Erin Venuti. She is the current president of the Parents Association. Uh, she has two students here. Patrick is a senior and Megan is a sophomore. I'll let her introduce the rest of the entourage. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for the invite again to be here. Um, I had asked Mr. Aubrey at one of our meetings that I watch other school committee meetings and I know that other parents associations and athletic associations give uh, reports. So I thought it was important that you knew who we are, the faces behind what we do and what we bring to the school. But I'd also like to thank not just the, the three other people that are here with me today, but the entire parents um, who support everything that we do from fundraising to attending our, some of our events. But tonight we have with me Nancy and Lee and Laurel. And uh, Laurel um, kind of got dragged along with me when I said, uh, we're, we're the last two left, we gotta rebuild. Um, and that was during a pandemic, so um, so, so thank you all. Um, and Nancy and Lee have been fabulous and they've jumped right in along with a lot of our freshman parents this year as we've rebuilt. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't call out somebody who has been with us for the past eight years, Miss Mary Jo Tanzi, whose youngest is graduating this year, another Patrick. Um, and she will be uh, this from, she serves on a lot of, not just the Parents Association, but a lot of the school committees and does a lot of our photography for the school and uh, really is a stealth volunteer um, and big shoes to fill there. So as Mr. Aubrey said, uh, uh, my name is Erin Venuti. I do have two children here. I have a senior and a sophomore. Um, and so one of the reasons why I decided to volunteer was because I felt that the school gave so much. When I found out there was no fees for sports, I wanted to give back automatically, and then it just snowballed from there. We've been able to meet some great people, we've made some great connections, and then our uh, response has just been for the student body, and we've gotten to know a lot of parents and students. We are your ears and kind of mouths on the fields and on the car drives and at the bus stops, um, so other parents may be coming to us or we're getting to know the students and we're hearing from them and we're bringing them back to the administration saying, here's what we care, here's what's going on. Uh, some of the things that we've done in the past is the school lights, we've actually, each group from the Vikings Athletic Association, the Parents Association, each uh, spent $5,000 of a total of $10,000 to help facilitate the lights on the field. We knew that was very important to the school atmosphere. Uh, we do more than just the, run the concession stand. We also will supply all the championship jackets. Um, looking forward to purchasing more of those in the spring for all of our student athletes. So again, at no cost to them. Uh, we do scholarship programs for both of our, uh, and it's not just, we don't call it scholarships, we actually call it a rewards program so that the, uh, the students can actually use them for more licensing tools. You just don't have to be going on to take uh, college credits and we make sure to let the students uh, be aware of that. Uh, we do enrichment programs, which we're hoping to get back, right? Mm -hmm. Right, looking to bring in some actual speakers, um, <laughs> some actual <laughs> programs, and I think the kids are looking forward to that too. Uh, any extra needs for the students? We do staff and teacher appreciation, which we are so fortunate enough to have our, um, the brass lantern here, which we do coffee and pastries uh, twice a month on Wednesdays for everybody, all staff in the building, inclusive bus drivers can come in, anybody in maintenance, if you're here in the morning, come and get it. And that's what we do for to let the teachers know that we appreciate them. Um, and any extra new needs of the students, whether we care if there's a program that we need or if we need some sort of um, materials around the school or something that we've just done with like banners around the school. Uh, whatever we need, we'll work in conjunction with the administration staff to bring that. What we have done during the pandemic was we've had to flip on a dime. Uh, typically we have one big event, and, and it's a physical event, right? Um, our cabin fever, and that, that hasn't been able to happen in the past couple of years. So what we did was we decided to take some of the donations and other items, and we started doing our December raffle calendar, which more parents were able to get involved 
It was an easier sell for the kids, and we've done just as successful. Um, we'll be doing another fundraiser shortly, which will be kind of a Rustic Marlin kind of sign thing, which we're working with our graphics department to actually take uh, the symbols from each of the trade shops and have that put on a sign for purchase. Um, but again, as much Viking pride and uh, social folk tech pride as we can put out there is what we're trying to do. And that's what we hear from our parents and our students. So thank you for the time to come here and speak to all of you. Um, I know my children won't be part of that new school, but uh, they are very, very excited um, to come back uh, so that I don't have to hear how did they get a new school when we did it. <laughs> so um, thank you again for the time. And thank you to my volunteers who are here tonight. And thank you to all the parents and students who help out um, in one way or another, whether it's buying the raffle calendar or uh, volunteering at some of our events, car show. Looking forward to that again. Did you see how big that was this year? We're coming back. We're coming back. Um, and the craft fair as well. So um, again, continue to help us uh, by you know helping come to some of those things and spread the word. And thank you for your time. Thank you for all you do. when they're at the Little League games, when they're in town, when people are asking, what goes on over there? What's the education like? What are the sports? These are the people, these are the people in town that other parents are asking. So we appreciate everything they do as they talk about the school honestly and <coughs> let people know what's going on. So this is one group of uh, involved parents. We have another group of involved parents that's on the school council. I've talked about it a couple times this year. Just kind of bringing you in, bringing you up to date where we're at. Uh, we have a couple meetings left. I'm hoping to bring you a completed school improvement plan in May. Okay, so that would be on the calendar. We're talking about a couple of themes that have come out. I think last time I was here, we talked about communication. They, they applauded us on our communication once you're in the building and our messaging home and things like that. But they feel like we need to do a better job promoting the school to younger kids and younger families. So they came up with some interesting ideas. They want to do, um, when the students come in as freshmen, they do an exploratory. They go through all, all 12 programs. Well, when a student comes in and comes home and says, I was in Met today, the parents don't know what Met is. So they're looking for us to do some videos or come up with a night where the parents can come through the program and find out what each one does so that they can have those important conversations when they go home with their student. They understand the background of what's happening and going on. Uh, they also want us to celebrate, as Aaron mentioned, our sports teams and other events in the school, the drama club, the, the, the craft fair, anything that goes on in here, they want us to promote us outside of our own district, outside of our own people, trying to reach out and let the area towns know what's going on and what we're doing and how great a school and community this really is. Uh, in the students realm, we're looking to uh, bring in class meetings. Now that COVID's over, we can start putting kids back together and have pointed conversations about what it means to be a freshman or a junior when you're going to be mentoring freshmen next year. What it means to be a senior and you're looking at after graduation, where are you going to go? All these things we want to bring together. We're talking about uh, mentoring programs for the ninth graders kind of a peer element type thing. And then um, we're also, tomorrow, next Monday night is our next meeting. Anybody's invited, you can um, send me an email and I'll give you the invite. Uh, so we are working on curriculum and assessment on the next couple of meetings. So that's really where we're at. We've kind of done the, the building stuff and the communication stuff. Now we're down to the nitty gritty of where do we need to put our money? Where do we need to invest? What kind of curriculum do we need to bring in to better the student's population? Anybody have any questions? All right, then I'm going to leave it over to Sandy. Thank you, Mark. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Sandy. Let's start with a little bit of a cliche. This is a truly exemplifies what it means to um, that it takes a village to raise a child, and I would really like to thank Erin um, for her really uh, powerful presentation, and thank Colette for her work. I do know we're on camera, but I don't know if any of you have stumbled across the TV show Abbott Elementary. It's a very funny uh, uh, 
situation comedy about an elementary school. Last night, I happened to watch a little bit of it, and they talked about uh, friendships in the workplace, and they, there's, there's a little bit of a kerfuffle about having just a work friend. And I think folks would think of Colette and I as being work friends, but an avid elementary would realize that work friends, work friends, are real friends. And I think that there are many people who feel just that way about Colette in our building. She is really a backbone of our institution. So thank you, Village. We appreciate you. Uh, a few other updates. I'm going to represent myself um, as well as Grace, who's unable to be with us tonight. Our um, student advisor, our, our 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 school, our, our school committee student representative, student body rep. Sorry, um, too busy thinking about Colette as my friend. So <laughs> now I'm back on point. Uh, sports. We have more students than ever uh, participating in sports, spring sports. We have 195 students uh, who have registered for spring sports. Um, with the, that's about one third of our school population, so pretty impressive. We roll out the red carpets uh, for tryouts on Monday. Uh, we have lacrosse, cross country, baseball, and softball. As uh, sorry, it's not cross country; it's track and field and spring. We have, we'll be sending 26 students to Skills States next month, and right now we have our horticulture program at Future Farmers of America competing for awards as we speak of that. Uh, the Drama Club, though, I'm going to end with a couple of invitations. The first is an invitation to our to Check Please, presented by the Drama Club in April. Their uh, dinner the theater is the first. If you'd like to see just the show at 7.30, it is 7, 8, or at 7 p.m. It's the 2nd, 8th, and the 9th. And then finally, this is for me personally, I would really enjoy your company at the Credit for Life Fair on uh, April 13th from 7.30 till 8.30. It is a continental breakfast, and I'm going to put you to work. <laughs> we are doing a hybrid event this year, and we're engaging the math department and the English department in this uh, event. So we've done the Credit for Life in many different ways. During COVID, we were able to do an online event. Pre-COVID, we had a very big fair in our gymnasium. We slowed it down a little bit. Um, when we have uh, the students are doing the Credit for Life mathematical portion uh, online supported by the South Shore Bankers, who will be at the other end of the chat answering their questions. What we're doing live on campus is that the students will come in for a continental breakfast to start their school day. They will learn how to have conference chatter. We've all been to a conference where we've had to hold our cup of coffee, a bagel, and engage in an adult conversation. We're going to ask them to do that uh, with adults, with the adults in the room. We're going to ask them to come dressed in business casual attire. Part of your role will be helping us identify those students who did a good job dressing in business casual attire. They'll move from there into their math classrooms for the online experience, and they'll, then they'll be called down by shop to a, the booth like similar to what they had done in the past. But the focus this time is not on calculating a mathematical formula about, about how much their transportation is going to cost. They'll do that online. This is about talking to someone in the car industry about owning a car, having a professional dialogue, an adult dialogue with an adult about an adult topic. So they'll have the opportunity to interact with up to four booths. They'll get a sign off on two. We'll send that back to the English teacher and say, hey, your student participated and did a nice job communicating. The math teacher will have the, the responsibility for calculating the work on the uh, other end of the hybrid online experience. So April 13th, 7.30, love to see you. Buy a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're back on. That concludes my report. I'll turn it back over to you for new business. New, new business. The MSBA Initial Compliance Certification. The first item is to vote to accept the MSBA's Initial Compliance Certification document that outlines the terms and conditions of the core program. Do I have a motion? Lachlan, second by Cohasset. Any discussion? I made my comments to Tom on it. Okay. He, uh, I think he'll take heat on it for me. All right. Other than that, uh, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Well, anybody else have any discussion? I'll take a vote then. All in favor of that? Aye. Aye. It is unanimous. There is no one opposed. The motion <clears throat> carries. Learn to cope facilities use. 
Yeah. Ask for a motion to approve the monthly use of should meetings. Be brought, I should, we move on. should we take a roll call on that since it goes to an SBA? As long as it's an open session, a voice will, will okay. be accepted. Right. Okay. Thank Double you. checking. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. We have, we have four years of crossing T's and dotting I's. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> okay. Sorry to interrupt. Not a problem. Not a problem. I'd ask for a motion to approve the monthly use of a of meeting space for Learn to Cope as they resume in-person meetings this spring after being remote since the beginning of the pandemic. Situate. I'll second it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, second by Whitman. Any discussion on that? Mr. Chairman, just as a reminder, Learn to Cope is an organization that supports uh, people who have loved ones that are struggling with addiction. This committee has approved their use in the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. It's motion carries. There is a surplus request. Motion to accept the item as listed. <coughs> Situate, second by Hanson. Hanson. I have a question and discussion on that. Yeah, go ahead. Is it worth our while to trade these, these things like this instead of if it's a piece of junk, nobody wants it, and that's just going to Mr. Might, Chairman, go ahead. Yes, actually, Bob, we recently did amend our procurement policy, excuse me, our surplus, our disposition policy, so that as the state the state regulations say that a municipality has to specify in its surplusing policy that it can utilize uh, items for trading. So when it is in our best interest, we have now have the ability to do that so that we're getting maximum bang for buck. Okay. Okay. And that is a Hobart dishwasher. <clears throat> we're declaring surplus. All in favor? <laughs> Again, it's unanimous. Motion carries. Any requests for action? I have one. Yes, sir. I don't know whether it should be under request for action, but after last night's um, finance meeting in Norwell, and this is just a thought, I don't want people jumping wild on it. How about us sponsoring to our communities, the finance communities in particular, and maybe the town administrators? And this involved Jim on how to interpret the way the state mandates us different things in our formula. Mr. Chairman, if I just to expand on what Bob said, uh, there were there were questions uh, at Norwell's advisory committee meeting uh, about uh, the Chapter 70 funding formula. We all know that you it is synonymous to say Chapter 70 funding formula and complicated. Uh, but it does come to a point where people who are stewards of a town's finances want to know a little bit more about how these numbers are calculated. Uh, Very different. And I, th and I think that, uh, if I may, I, I think that the idea has merit. And we know from listening to earlier presentations that we can, we can patch in a lot of people to a professional development provider through Zoom and or in person to be able to go over this. The Department of Education does have some resources, but there are also third-party providers who could not only explain the mechanics of Chapter 70, but could also provide specific, specific town insight as to why a number is the way it is. Yeah, and uh, it, uh, unfortunately, Noel has a new committee with the exception of yeah. one person, but uh, I'm going to say, 50% of us at the tables right here can't explain how to do it. Okay. It is complicated, it's mind-boggling. You know, when you have to take one-eighth and one-one-hundredth of this and <laughs> all that, it's, uh, but, uh, it's a thought. And uh, I think it would help our communities, especially uh, when well, we send them a bill. I'd be happy to look into that, yeah, Mr. Chairman. It, it may help Colin, too, if he has to do it once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's, That's all right. And not eight times. Go ahead. Yeah, on that note, Tom, you may want to get a hold of uh, Hanson Cable's access. 
by with that information, do a show on it, and it can be distributed to the all the communities that are in it, right? That That's way, right. you know, uh, you may you may be able to get somebody from the state to come in and do the show with you and do an answer. You know, they, back they, and forth. they have been very accessible, and I, I I'm sure that could be part of it, Dan. Because I can remember years ago when uh, our previous business manager tried to explain uh, how they did it to us, uh, and it's very very complicated. It you know, it's very yeah. depending on each individual town exactly how they you know. They fit the they fit the program so because um, what's maybe in your town is a lot different than what's in our town because of the, you know, the well, makeups of it. We have new people that are yeah. interested in Kenny's. Yeah. Um, but uh, one thing we did forget is uh, what we pay for that the towns don't last night. We didn't bring that up at all. You know, a snow plowing and uh, yeah. all, all the other words. It, it, inflates, it inflates the per pupil cost yeah, beyond yeah, the, the yeah. formula. But, right. uh, so, I think uh, it'd be a good idea. You know, even if it costs us a, a breakfast or something. I'll feed them and they'll come. No, that's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. Thank you, Bob. Okay, I will take a motion to go into executive session. Thank you. Thank you. Rockham seconded. Any discussion on that? No. Do you have to explain why? Well, I'll take right. a roll call vote. We're getting to it. Go into the I'm roll sorry, call. Dan, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dan, uh, the chair stated at the beginning, yes, so okay. we're, we're okay. covered. Yep. yep. I thought so. <laughs> roll call. Yes. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. We're now in executive session. We'll take a, about a five minute break. Okay, we're back in regular session. We are not going to take up agenda item number 11. And now I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, moved. Second. Second by Abington. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. We are adjourned.